Hi, in short introductions to linguistics, we look at phonemes and allophones. We know the phonetic alphabet. We have learned the consonants of English, the vowels of English, the forms, and we have looked at all the phonetic symbols to represent these 44 sounds. Today we look at some slightly different forms of these sounds we learned. We learned 44 sounds and these 44 sounds are the 44 phonemes of English. They are phonemes and each phoneme could have allophones. Let's look how it works. Here I have the phoneme within slashes per sound. In these three words, we have pin, spin, and stop. And in these three sounds, we have the same phoneme. But there is a slight difference in the way we pronounce this phoneme in these three contexts. Here you have the sound occurring in an initial position where we pronounce it as p, which can be represented by this symbol here. P. Yeah, there's a slight small h above it. So, p is an allophone of the phoneme p. So, we have only one symbol for the sound p in English. But it can have, here I have given three. There can be more. Allophonic variations or variants. So, these three are the three allophones of p. First is P, as in pin, pencil, etc., which is an aspirated one. Aspiration came because it is in a stressed initial position. And the second one, it is an unaspirated per sound, as in spin, spin. So the symbol is this. And in the third one, it is an unreleased plosive form. So, we know that P is a bilabial plosive sound, meaning both lips close and then there is a release. It is P. But in this context, the, the final position, we don't release. It is unreleased. It is stop. We don't say stop P, but stop. So, that is another allophone of per, and we show it using this kind of a symbol. This mark is a diacritic. It's a mark that we put above or below the uh, the symbol representing the sound to show the allophonic variation. So, the phoneme per has three allophones. So now we learn that. There are phonemes and allophones, and allophones are variant forms of a single phoneme. Now let's look at this in little more detail. What is a phoneme? A phoneme is a basic unit of sound in a language. If we replace a phoneme with another phoneme, there will be a change in the meaning. For example, if we replace her in pit with burr, we will get bit, which is another word. A phoneme, when we replace, we'll get another word. And English has 44 phonemes. So the sounds we have learned in the previous videos have all been phonemes. We did not look at the allophonic variant forms of these phonemes. For our practical purposes, our knowledge of phonemes is enough. But it is important to know that there can be allophonic variations. And allophones are any kind, any of the various phonetic realizations of a phoneme in a language. So a single phoneme can be realized phonetically in slightly different forms depending on where that phoneme occurs. So that is allophone. Allophones are the various realizations of a phoneme 
which do not contribute to distinctions in meaning. So if you use one phoneme instead of another, there will be a change of meaning. But if we use one allophone instead of another, your pronunciation will not be that good, but the, the meaning will not change. So we represent allophones within square brackets. Do you see the square brackets? Yes. Phonemes are represented between slashes here. You know, see the slashes. Phonemes are always represented between slashes and allophones are represented between square brackets. Now, we look at this in a little more detail, looking at distribution. Here I said the allophones may, uh, you know, different realization depending on where the phoneme is located. That's what I said. Now we look at that. This where it is located is called distribution. So look at this. Distribution is the position where a phone occurs. Distribution is also the environment where the phone occurs. Phone means any sound is a phone. A phoneme is a phone. An allophone is also a phone. So all speech sounds are phones. So distribution means where that phone is located. Is it in an initial part, medial part or final part? We saw that in, in the per in the initial part, medial part and final part here. Initial, medial and final. That is in a way that is a kind of distribution of the sound. Also the environment where the phone occurs. Environment means is that particular phoneme near a fricative sound? or a voice sound or a, 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 a near a vowel sound. So what are the neighboring sounds? That is a phonetic environment. So that also decides allophonic variants. These phones, those phones that are distinctive from others are called phonemes and those that are not distinctive are called allophones. Allophones are also distinctive, but what we mean here is the uh, meaning change will not be involved. Now looking at looking at it even closer, there are two kinds of distributions we say mainly. One is contrastive, other is complementary. Phonemes are always in contrastive distribution. If two sounds can occur in the same position and environment, they are said to be in contrastive distribution. Even allophones can occur in the same phonetic environment, but it will the pronunciation will not be correct. So it's not, it is inclusively sitting there. It cannot be. Normally, an allophone, where an aspirated allophone should be there, an unaspirated cannot be there. But even if you put it there, there won't be change in meaning. That's all. So we should remember it that way. So when we say two sounds can occur and cannot occur, we mean it in a special way. So let's come back. Contrastive distribution. If two sounds can occur in the same position and environment, they are said to be in contrastive distribution. So per and ber can occur in this particular environment. So they are said to be in contrastive distribution. They are contrastive because when we change, there will be a difference in the meaning. So this, this a sound and a sound can occur in the same environment but meaning will change. So phonemes are said to be in contrastive distribution. Complementary distribution, it, it does, it's not as um, disturbingly complicated as it looks. It's basically very simple. Let's look at it. Complementary distribution. When two phones cannot occur in the same position, they are called, they are said to be in complementary distribution. Uh, we can quickly run back and look at the first slide. These are in contrastive distribution. So when, well, in fact, this is, this is the same sound, but instead of if you put a b sound, you know, it is contrastive. A phoneme, um, when you keep changing a phoneme, there is a contrast. But allophone, instead of per here, even if you put this per, meaning will not change, but this aspirated sound can occur only here. It cannot occur in the mid position. It cannot occur. At the same time, per and ber can occur in the same position. Per and unreleased 
cannot occur in the same position. I hope that is clear. That is what is meant by complementary distribution. Contrastive distribution, phonemes. Complementary distribution, allophones. Let's read this and understand clearly. When two phones cannot occur in the same position and environment, they are said to be in complementary distribution. They are most likely to be allophones. Per sound occurring in an initial accented syllable cannot occur after a, after another sound like sir, per. It's, it's not, uh, it is not aspirated anymore. Per can occur only in an initial accented syllable. It's not necessarily initial. Even if it comes within a word, if the accent is immediately on that per, it will be aspirated anyway. Uh, and these allophones are mutually exclusive. But if replaced, there will be no change in meaning and the word will remain the same. So that's a contradiction here. There's no meaning change. It can be placed there, but that placing would be a mistake. But by making that mistake, you will not cause any confusion in understanding. But if you change one phoneme with another, it is very much possible you will have a very sensible word, but that word will be a different word. That is how it works. Contrastive and complementary distribution. And uh, minimal pairs is something we use to distinguish between two phonemes. When you want to practice different phonemes, what we do is we replace just the phonemes inside words. For example, stable. We replace burr with per and becomes, you know, staple. Stable, staple. Tin, din. Sip, zip. Tidy, tiny. We, we replace only one phoneme. So it's a kind of contrastive thing. And by replacing, we get pairs. And minimal pairs are very useful for two purposes. It help, they help us decide whether two sounds are different phonemes or the allophones are the same phoneme. They also help us practice these sounds more in our lives. And free variation is in layman's term an alternative pronunciation of a word. When two phones occur in the same environment, causing no change in meaning, we say there is free variation. It could be a phoneme. As in the first sound of the word example, we pronounce it as example and also example. Both E and A are possible. They are said to be in free variation. And there is no change in meaning. Uh, so, and also the word Linux is sometimes, you know, some, sometimes pronounced as Linux. People pronounce it both as Linux and Linux. So, E and I are in free variation, not contrastive distribution. Though apparently it is in contrastive distribution. Here, uh, there is no change in the meaning of the word. Allophones are more often found to be in free variation. So, when in speech, if you use an allophone wrongly, there will not be any change in the sense, even though your pronunciation will be a little inexact. A quick look at the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, which is a very uh, detailed representation of all the sounds that are possible so you have, uh, you see, uh, we, we know, we study this bilabial, labor, and etc. and uh, the plosive nasal, etc. But you see, there are not just English sounds. There are other sounds as well. For example, these two, we studied T and D are alveolar plosive sounds. And we learned that the only retroflex sound in English is a R. But here, there are more retroflex sounds listed. This is T and this is D. The T and D that I heard in English speech in India, the and the are retroflex sounds. And these are the symbols to represent that. I was just introducing to you the broader uh, international phonetic alphabet, which contain more phonetic symbols. We have chosen 44 from this huge list. It is not just this. These are only the pulmonic consonants. There are non-pulmonic sounds here. There are many other symbols that are used. And also, these are the vowel, all the vowels that are possible, vowel sounds. There could be more vowel sounds possible in different languages, but these are broadly symbols for different vowels in different languages possible, of which we have chosen 12 for English. And look at the diacritics. These are this little round here. All these are diacritic 
symbols, marks, which are which you know which show. For example, this this diacritic under n shows it is a syllabic sound. This this shows it is a syllabic sound. Syllabic sound means usually in the formation of a syllable we need a vowel. Sometimes one consonant sound or two consonant sounds jointly create a syllable and the vowel is only implied. Then it becomes a syllabic sound. We will have an example soon. So all those things and, and this is no audible release. We saw that. Stop. Is an, you saw the symbol here? You see the symbol here? In stop we saw that unreleased plosive sound. So you have different marks like that. All these are used to represent the allophones of different languages. We are interested in English. And now we, before we close, we look at two types of transcription. We can have broad transcription or narrow transcription. Broad transcription means we use only phonetic symbols. Uh, sorry, we use only phonemes, the symbols for phonemes. Such transcription is called phonemic transcription or broad transcription. But if you go for a more advanced level, to a more advanced level, actually to a broader level, though we call it narrowing, uh, we have phonetic transcription. Phonetic transcription or narrow transcription uses allophonic symbols. You see, cat is here having a narrow transcription with a k and an unreleased symbol here. And this, this is unreleased t but button, it's not button, it's button. And so unreleased t. And here this is a um, this mark under n shows it's a syllabic consonant. We should remember a syllabic consonant is a consonant which serves as a syllable. That means a vowel sound is implied there. So n button and also the l in the end syllable bl. There it's a syllabic sound and you have this diacritic here and this clue. It's not clue. It is clue l. And that is a slightly different allophonic form of the phoneme l, and you have a zero underneath. And uh, it is, look at this clue. Uh, in Malayalam, we have a separate la. In English, we have only one. So it is lap would be la, and clue would be slightly l. So that, these are, those are two different, um, allophones of l. And you have another allophone here syllable, a syllabic uh, consonant form. So, transcription can be phonemic or phonetic. Phonemic is also called broad transcription and phonetic transcription is called narrow. For, remember, in our examinations, those who take exams in phonetics, it's always phonemic transcription that is asked. So, though we usually say uh, uh, there will be phonetic transcription, it is phonemic transcription that is asked. So, if in the question paper, if you are asked to make a phonemic transcription, don't get alarmed. It is a usual transcription that we do with phonemic symbols, not phonetic, not uh, allophonic symbols. So, I hope uh, we have uh, got that clear, what a phoneme and allophone is. If you haven't, please go back and listen to the video once again. That will be of most help to you. So, thank you very much for listening to my talk for the last few minutes and we'll be back with another short video on morphemes and allomorphs soon. Thank you again.